A sober analysis of Web2 innovators gives us a mixed report card. On the one hand, the web's second era, which ran from 2002 to the present, created tremendous economic value for stockholders and for founders. And it accelerated internet adoption, connecting the world in ways I think many of us could not have really imagined a few decades ago. Platforms like Facebook gave like-minded people new tools to self-organize, sometimes with positive outcomes and sometimes not. First, advertising became the primary revenue model and many platforms, which actually began as more open-ended systems, converted to an ad-friendly model. And when they did that, they tightly curated the experience and worked hard to keep users engaged so that they could harvest their data. Second, Web2 enriched financial intermediaries. Now, it's okay to make money in business, but a lot of these intermediaries did not really need to innovate to stay relevant because Web2 did not change their role. We still need trusted middlemen for transactions online. There were a lot of innovations, so-called fintech or financial technology, and that proved ultimately just to be digital wallpaper on the old edifice of finance. Third, as the web went mostly mobile, two big companies, Apple and Google, essentially controlled the main gateway to the second era of the web at least, via the Android and Apple ecosystems, and ultimately began to charge uh, monopoly-like rents for, for developers using their platforms that ultimately stifled innovation. Fourth, users in Web2 really have no control over the platform, and in some cases, really no visibility into how they're run. Platforms could change without community input. Some Web2 businesses, for example, began as open-ended networks and became closed-ended platforms in pursuit of greater ad revenue. Web3 starts with the premise that users should be owners and have a say in how things are run. Fifth, Web2 became really a winner-take-all model that has created these monopolies and, and stifled competition, especially in certain areas, from search to streaming to the operating system ecosystem. Sixth, internet users became hooked by recommendation engines that, while useful sometimes in helping people find what they were looking for, also pushed them into self-reinforcing echo chambers. Web2 algorithms learned that extremism increased engagement, as did misinformation. Finally, these large platforms became choke points for the internet and targets for government pressure to track citizens. This is true in many parts of the world, but especially in China, where many of the large Web2 giants initially scaled on their own, but eventually became co-opted by the government. Anything that is centralized can be controlled. Web3's decentralized promise will make it harder to censor and control user behavior.